Hey everyone, Verity Ritchie here, as you already know. Oh, it's a fucking typo. Today I'm going to talk about bisexual books by bi authors. Bye 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 books bye books bye bye. This is this is good entertainment for YouTube.com. Specifically, we're going to cover some favorite books of mine that I've read over the last few years. Not necessarily the best bisexual books I've ever read, but bisexual books in you know hashtag own voices. So get ready for girlfriend experience. I recommend bisexual books by bisexual authors. Bye bye boo boo girlfriend experience. The first book we're going to talk about is Swords Point by Ellen Kushner. Swords Point. So this is the first in a trilogy of books in which um, everyone's bisexual. These are set in a fantasy world, um, which isn't very high fantasy, it's very uh, low fantasy. The genre is referred to as uh, a fantasy of manners. It deals with themes such as like class and murdering people. The books are set in a culture where wealthy people uh, hire swordsmen to fight out their battles for them. So whoever's swordsman doesn't die, they are the winner of, of the argument or the problem. Of course, swordsmen don't necessarily live in privilege themselves, so there's an element of class to the story, um, obviously also an element of bisexuality. Not all the characters are bisexual, most of them are bisexual. And you know when you just sense these bi vibes? Well, I sensed the bi vibes and I was like, come on. People who are not bisexual don't write like this. This is such a bisexual thing to do, to just be like, oh yeah, you know, like most people are kind of bisexual. So um, I messaged the author on Tumblr anonymously and I was like, are you bisexual? And she was like, yeah. That's what's cited on her Wikipedia. <laughs> this is the order the books came out in, Swords Point, Fall of the Kings, Privilege of the Sword. But this is the chronological order of the story. Swords Point, Privilege of the Sword, Fall of the Kings. Privilege of the Sword is more like YA literature, but like good YA literature, you know. Sword's Point is probably my favourite in the series. Um, they all can stand alone. They're all set about 20 years apart, so they're not too strongly tied to one another. So whether you want bisexual men who are murderers, or um, young women learning to fight with swords, or you want um, scholars reading stuff, um, you can pick your genre of bisexual a fantasy of manners. I find it really interesting to think about what is a fantasy world for a bisexual? What is the sort of power fantasy where we're normalized? Like this, it felt to me like this was written by a bisexual because that's where the motivation comes from, to feel normal, I think. And that's where I think the value is in reading bisexual books by bisexual authors. You get this insight, which I don't think you would get in other places. These books aren't necessarily about good people, and that's something that I personally like about them. I get the feeling that, sort of, on Tumblr, when I'm looking for bisexual book recommendations, I often find book recommendations that are really about um, more light-hearted stuff that's about, sort of, very innocent young adult characters, and, like, the idea that good representation is, sort of, writing about good people, and to me, I think good representation is when the author has half a brain and the characters are well developed and I, you know, like how you get like strong female characters and people often interpret what is a strong female character? Oh, she has a gun and she kicks people in the face. Like, is that a strong female character? Like, strong, strong, okay, but like strong, like it's a different meaning. Snow was falling on Riverside, great white feather puffs that veiled the cracks in the facades of its ruined houses, slowly softening the harsh contours of jagged roof and fallen beam. Eaves were rounded with snow, overlapping, embracing, sliding into each other, capping houses all clustered together like a fairy tale village. Little slopes of snow nestled in the slats of shutters, still cosily latched against the night. It dusted the tops of fantastical chimneys that spiralled up from frosted roofs, and it formed white peaks in the ridges of the old coats of arms carved above the doorways. Only here and there, a window, its glass long shattered, gaped like a black mouth with broken teeth, sucking snow into its maw. Oh. The next book I'm going to recommend is The Book of the Unnamed Midwife by Meg Ellison. This is part of a trilogy, but it's definitely, again, another standalone book, totally. Um, I read the second book in the series, and it's, it's set much later and with different characters, so I recommend this book as a standalone novel. It's a post-apocalyptic book, set in the not-too-distant future, I guess, and 
the twist is that most of humanity has been wiped out, but more women have been wiped out than men. Women suddenly become rare, and by becoming rare, they become a commodity to men. So there's kind of like a feminist twist to this story. Um, it's not preachy though. Um, it's very gritty and honest. The main character is bisexual. Of course, the author is also bisexual. It's set immediately after the world has ended. So it's it feels very tangible and like our world. World? This one is set immediately after the apocalypse. So it's, you know, it's tomorrow kind of thing. So it feels very familiar. And the second book in the series is set sort of, it's like a hundred years into the future. And it, it's too, it's too distant for me personally. It feels much less familiar. It's an unfamiliar culture. So to me, it feels a lot less grounded. Whereas this book feels very grounded in today and modern politics. Sexual abuse and sexual assault are definitely a theme in this story, obviously given the nature of the story and the, the commodification of women. It definitely lends itself to some degree to a commentary on our sort of modern society. Personally, I just love a little bit of post-apocalypse. I find that really sexy. I find the idea of, um, you know, being able to walk into a grocery store and eat all the crisps, very sexy. Next up is Buddha of Suburbia by Hanif Qureshi. This book is technically fiction, but not fictional enough to not upset his family when he published it. <laughs> I sped through this book. I find it, it's very funny and believable in just sort of a painfully honest way. I guess it's a Bildungsroman, I guess, kind of. Um, he starts as a teenager. He is a half white, half Asian British guy growing up in the 1970s, 80s. He isn't the Buddha of suburbia. I saw a very upset review, I think on Goodreads, um, felt feeling that they had been misled by the title because they were expecting a Buddha of suburbia and the main character is not a Buddha of suburbia. The Buddha is in fact not a character in this story. Plot wise, I guess it's about his experience as an actor, but to me, my memory of it is more about this diverse group of characters from different lifestyles, different backgrounds, different cultures, different classes, and how everyone's a little bit messed up and everyone's kind of coping and everyone's a bit rubbish. Next book is Lord of the Rings by Jet. No, I'm just kidding, but I'm not kidding. He was totally bisexual. If you read the subtext. Right on. Now onto some nonfiction. This is Girl Sex 101 by Alison Moon. If you like having sex, with the ladies, then this is the book for you. But what do I mean by the ladies? Do I mean people with vaginas? Is this a vagina book? Oh no, this is a book about ladies with all kinds of sticky outy bits. Censorship, but you don't know why. You don't know what's under that finger. So this book, it details um, what to do with your fiddly bits, but also um, communication. It really, I, I think if I were virginal, I would find this book extremely helpful. I, I mean, I find it helpful even having had sex with at least one person myself. I'm innocent. It also illustrates at the end of each chapter, it gives you an example, an erotic prose example, basically porn. It, it writes, you, there's some porn at the end of each chapter, helping you to understand what you kind of learned in that chapter. I think even if you um, are seasoned and uh, mangled and um, a little past your sell-by date like myself, um, there's this puts things into words sometimes in a way which is very helpful. I think sometimes it's hard to articulate what you of what you are thinking and feeling um, and having the words to describe that is just always going to be helpful, right? The next book is Other Bound by Corinne Divis. Um, I'm also, I've also got here On the Edge of Gone, which is her subsequent book. Other Bound is set in a fantasy world, but also in our world. It's about a boy in our world and a girl in the fantasy world who are sort of psychically connected. It is a bisexual teen drama. It's young adult. It's good young adult. I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to criticize young adult, but it's so, I feel like it's very hit and miss sometimes. But definitely the audience for young adult literature, if you enjoy YA, you, you will probably enjoy this book. It's original, it's tangible, it's unpredictable. The girl is bisexual, and I think the boy is kind of bisexual 
living through her experience. And then in On the Edge of Gone, the main character is not explicitly bisexual, but there's a supporting character who is bisexual and trans. I might have messaged the author on like Tumblr or Twitter to check. <laughs> because I was like, this feels bisexual. Otherbound is the better book, in my opinion. Otherbound is good YA. Uh, On the Edge of Gone is good literature, good sci-fi. The main character is autistic. If that appeals to you, the author is also autistic. I haven't read any of her other books at this point, but um, I have faith that probably she's someone to check out. Another non-fiction book, Not My Father's Son by Alan Cumming. If you don't know who Alan Cumming is, um, you may remember him from such films as X-Men or Bernard and the Genie. This is the kind of bisexual book, is, which is not about being bisexual at all, really. It's incidental. It's autobiographical and there's no love triangles or anything. The fact that he had a female partner and later he had a male partner is is not particularly commented on. It's, it's about his life and his relationship to his father and his masculinity. And it's a beautiful story and it's always really amazing to read stories about people who are just one of us, you know, like all these books, you'll find yourself just feeling, I mean, if you're bisexual, you'll find yourself just feeling normal. And that's something that I think bisexual authors often bring to literature is this sense of normality because there's no judgment on their part. And that feeling of like sensing that bisexual solidarity, not solidarity, but familiarity with the author. Okay, bear with me. I felt it with Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. I don't know if Sally Rooney's bisexual. I couldn't find anywhere on the internet Sally Rooney being bisexual. But Sally Rooney, if you're watching, let me know in the comments and, you know, like and subscribe. Support my Patreon. Become my sugar mama. I just don't see how a straight person could write this and it seems like the main character has a lot of similarities to Sally Rooney. They're both sort of Marxist and Irish and writers, they're both writers. I asked Ellen Kushner if she was bisexual and she said yes. And I asked Mary Wiseman from Star Trek if she was bisexual and she said yes. And you know what? My bi sense, my bi-fi is on point. So Sally Rooney, if you're not bisexual, please do not comment. Please don't tell me because I feel too good about it. <laughs> don't crush my feelings. I'm just kidding. You're allowed to be out however you want, Sally Rooney. I respect you and your identity. This book is about a bisexual student who gets mixed up, that gets tangled up in another couple's relationship, a man and a woman. I don't know if I can really give much more of a summary than that. There's also a lesbian best friend if you like lesbians. Yeah, I just hate spoilers. I think all books should be read with you not knowing anything about it. I think you should go try this, try this one time. Find a book that is like acclaimed as a really good book and read it without knowing anything about it. It's a really amazing experience. But I will tell you that th this isn't like a high action book. It's not an erotic book. It is friends having conversations. And sometimes they have sex with each other. More nonfiction, bisexual politics, queries, theories, theories, queries, and visions by Naomi Tucker, edited by Naomi Tucker. It's a bunch of essays by different bisexuals from the 1990s. 1995, were you born yet? No, you weren't. This is like, you know the bisexual flag was only created in 1998. So I think it's so fascinating to, I think we have this idea that bisexual culture is something very, I don't know, very modern and like bisexual politics is something, oh, I don't know, this is just like a whole thing to get into. I think people don't understand that bisexual politics of the 80s and 90s were quite intense and bisexual was seen in a very political way. The first ever bicon in the UK was a bisexual politics convention. And when people talk about bisexual history, they're like, did you know David Bowie, Freddie Mercury, and the bisexual flag was created in 1998? And that that's it, except they talk about um, Brenda Howard because she was a co-founder of Pride, which is great, but there was so much more happening. And I think the reason we focus on things like <laughs> David Bowie and Brenda Howard is because we like to focus on what we could do for gays and lesbians. I think that's also the reason this is, am I being too controversial? This is also the reason like Sylvia Rivera and Marsha P. Johnson, we always talk about what they did at Stonewall, which wasn't necessarily that, that much. And there's a lot of mythology based around that. Like Marsha didn't get there till later. Marsha says that Sylvia wasn't even there. Like they weren't the main participants in Stonewall and that's fine, 
because they did so much more and we don't respect them for the other things they did we respect them for what they did for the gay and lesbian community because i think we're always trying to prove ourselves and i think it's the same with brenda howard we're like what did bisexuals do for gays and lesbians well we we kind of founded like pride marches well yes but we we did more and this book has a whole section on the history of the bisexual movement which at this point was only about 25 years old but there was plenty going on it was quite political and could be very philosophical and of course bisexual activism had to survive the 1980s which was incredibly destructive and so just for that first section of this book on bisexual history i think this is so valuable you get the impression that you're really attached to something more um and that uh, i think bisexuality it's not very palatable for sort of a hollywood audience or anything so like we'll get a stupid crap movie about stonewall um that is easily digestible by a heterosexual audience um but the weirdness and wonder of uh, bisexuality and our history is, is glossed over in the mainstream so we don't have access to a lot of stuff like this and this book is out of print fudge sickles it's out of print isn't that horrible i bought but i bought this for a lot of money <laughs> Um, with money from my Patreon, support my Patreon. But it is available on archive.org. Archive.org archive .org is a great site, you should support them, and you can rent this out digitally on there and, and have a little read for yourself on your computer or your, or your phone. It's free. Free to read. Free to peruse. And on that note, there's also, there's a magazine from the 90s called Anything That Moves, which was a bisexual magazine. Um, the title comes from the idea of this is a magazine about anything that moves us. It's a play on the idea that bisexuals will fuck anything. It's clever, it's funny, and it, it is intelligent and political and it's fascinating. It's fascinating to see who we were and where we were all those years ago. And recently, a group of bisexuals on Tumblr came together and used their powers combined to make an online archive of every issue, which is amazing. I had, last year I think, I had contacted the people who hold the, the publication rights to the magazine and I was like, if, can, can we, can we do something with this? Can we like publish this? Could we make PDFs or something? And they just never replied to me. So I don't know what their deal is exactly and what their relationship to it is, but like, and possibly making an online archive might be a little bit illegal, but like, it's fine. <laughs> it's valuable and people need to have access to this. So I think it's really important. I'm gonna put a link in the description. Thank you, anything that moves Tumblr bisexuals team. You did, thank you. That was, that was so awesome. Next up, another nonfiction. This book is called Hugged by Verity Ritchie, not Verily Bitchy. My name is Verity Ritchie. Hugged is a sort of sketchbook diary is how I like to think of it. It's, uh, it was made over many, many years and it's just sort of a record of my, in large part, like romantic and sexual history. Um, it's not safe for work. There are all kinds of naughty bits, the inny bits, the outy bits, all of the bits are just graphically portrayed. It's horrific. Um, do not recommend. Um, drawings, words. So I can't say whether this is good. I like it and I would like you to buy it from me. But here's what people are saying on Goodreads about it, right? I feel very seen by this book. I can say I recommend it, but more than that, I feel like this book was meant for me to see and for people like me. That's from Andrew Robinson. Thank you, Andrew. Wow. Blessed be. Hugged is a painfully, in all the right ways, honest and genuine journey in learning how to navigate your own personal truth. It's from Tiasha. Thank you, Tiasha. Raw, powerful and intense, but done with such a minimalist take. The art style really helps to convey a sense of ennui and feeling out of place and the poignancy of the author's inner monologue really resonates. The notion that touch and desire are not necessarily these mutually exclusive and that the actualization of identity comes with experimentation of the self. Definitely a reflective piece from Karina Stopensky. Thank you, wow. Um, so some people like it and um, no one's told me to go fuck myself yet. People seem to be into it, um, maybe just because they like seeing me naked, maybe because I did a good job. 
probably the first. I'll put a link in the description to my Etsy if you want to buy a copy from me. Please give me your recommendations of bisexual books, um, particularly bisexual books by bi authors. I'm really interested in that. Um, but also, you know, any bisexual books I'm happy to hear, hear more about. I love, I love a good bisexual book. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and hit the little bell if you like. Thanks to all my patrons and a special thanks to Aaron, uh, Choi, Jerry, E.S., Joel, Nina, Susie, S., and Juicy Fantasy Queen Pond hookups. If you'd like your name in the credits of one of my videos too, uh, please uh, support my Patreon, or, or if you want to support me anonymously, you can also do that. I post some special treats on my Patreon, like um, some outtakes and previews and uh, polls, so you can have some say in what comes next, what videos I do next. And thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.